AI is changing everything for app development. Yesterday, I just got a call with my friend Paul. He just got an idea of a mobile application to coach people. And I said, okay, great. You know what? Let's build your application before tomorrow because I need to publish a YouTube video and I would love to document that process. And let me confess, before to commit to build that application for him, I never coded the mobile application by myself. Never, ever. But this time, I knew that I could do it thanks to AI. And I did it in 24 hours. In this episode, I'm showing you everything I did to build that application. And it's not only a mobile application, by the way. It's also a web admin interface where my friend Paul will be able to configure his app, the prompt that he wants to send to ChatGPT, etc. So let's dive right in. Hi, I'm Memory, founder and CEO at My City of Rain, where founders come to learn how to build their tech startup. And with this Startup Snacks series available on both podcasts and YouTube, we want to share the essential to make it easier for you to build your tech startup. So my friend Paul is a sales coach for startup and scale-up, quite known in his industry. And yesterday, he was wondering, okay, every time I do a coaching call, I usually go through the same type of questions. I would love to have an app that not only asks questions, but above all, compile the result to build a sales script. So I said, yes, deal, let's build it. And here it is, the app that we built. I was basically, I was looking for an app to, for my video. So it does the job. We are able to answer a couple of questions, questions that Paul are able to, he is able to uh, customize directly on his back office. And once we fill in all the questions, basically we will have the script. Yeah, two more questions and you're gonna see the result and boom. Here is the application. It's of course requesting OpenAI and it generates the script. Here it is. Now we have basically the script that is quite known and actually Paul now can put his science on the back office to put the prompt that he wants in order to coach his clients. And this is quite crazy because now he has able to, he's able to edit his users to basically tweak the prompt that is sent to OpenAI to see the scripts of his clients as well, as well as to edit or reorder the questions if he wants. All that built in 24 hours without any f background thing. It was just from scratch. So if you want to do pretty much the same and build an application, the most important is not really the code, it's how to prompt. Because AI, yes, is changing everything, but there is a big but. From my point of view, as of today, AI behaves like a junior developer. Very resourceful, he can learn tons of things. If you ask him anything, you will at some point manage to do it. But sometimes he's really losing himself and it can become a nightmare to handle code generated by a junior. And that's what I want you to avoid by watching this video. So let's go through the process and I will also share my tips in order to avoid difficulties while building an application with AI. So first, to get started, I just dropped the idea. I was basically crafting the idea, so it was my specifications. If I move a bit faster, I basically created these specifications, and after, I asked ChatGPT to summarize it. Then I went to a tool, curious, which is called URZARD, basically without, to generate AI. I wanted to try this type of tools for a while, and there is also Figma that now has a new uh, released AI version. I don't have access yet, but basically it can generate a new screen out of AI. So I asked ChatGPT to basically summarize my uh, specifications, and boom. I processed it directly on the website, on the, uh, on the UI Zard website. I selected basically the style. I dropped my color and boom, it was generating the design of my application in like just 10 seconds or so. So very interesting. Basically, that's the screens that I used. I changed them a little bit. I removed a couple of actions and a couple of things. And after I just took a screenshot of these screens. That's it, that's basically the application that I built. And I was now ready to transform these basic screenshots into a real app. So what I did next is to reuse the foundation app that I built on my last video using prompt basically to generate the ground, the, the basic mobile application, an empty application. It's easy to find, it's called AI prompt to generate a real mobile application on Windsurf. I will put the link to that video in the comment and I will also put the link of the downloaded foundation code so that if you want to redo 
it basically what I did in this video and build your own application, you can use this foundation source code. And here is how it works. You basically get the source code, you open the directory in Windsurf, you just get that directory like this, and that's it. Once we are on Windsurf, I need to install the requirement. So in order to install something, we will need what we call, is called the terminal and we will need also the AI prompt. I get on the readme, which is the documentation, and I have here the command line that I need to copy and paste. No need to understand what it does, just copy and paste this line and it will install everything that is required on your computer. And once we are done, I can basically launch the application directly on my mobile application thanks to Expo uh, Go. Expo Go is a mobile application where I can connect basically the developments that are uh, ongoing on my computer and see them directly on my mobile. And then the next step was to upload the image of the screens that I wanted. So basically I took these screens, I went, so I went directly on the right on Cascade to put basically uh, that I wanted to develop a new screen and then I uploaded my screen. So very important as you can see, without changing the, changing the structure of our monorepo and mobile application, can you change the welcome screen of the app to display this login screen. This is something very important because often ChatGPT, Cloud or whatever is behind Windsurf will try to reinvent the wheel or to change everything while we only need to modify a one small thing. So very important to remind that very often. And that's it. If I don't want to test the application on my mobile, I can use the emulator, the simulator that is provided basically on Mac. On Mac. And here we go, I have my application with my login screen. So for now, nothing works, of course, because it was just transforming a screen. But he understood that this is a field and now we can uh, type things. I can after provide some feedbacks. For instance, when I was loading this uh, form, the register button is uh, hidden. And actually, as you can might have seen with this, uh, you will be able to see with this video, it took me for a bit of a while to uh, actually fix the issue. So I am now on the emulator, the simulator. I was killing the application many, many times and the only way for me to make it was actually at some point, because I requested like two to three times, to take a screenshot. I took the screenshot of uh, basically the screen to show him that basically the register button was hidden and as soon as I dropped the screenshot, boom, the next uh, phase it worked like a charm and it fixed the thing right away. And that's exactly what he just did. Here it is. At least we can see the register button, but it's a very old iPhone simulator. We are on a, a SE, so basically a very small one. So it looks okay to me. And of course, you can guess I did exactly the same for the other screen, describing in the prompt what I wanted to do and basically telling them, okay, when someone click on the button on this screen, redirect to that screen. So I would love to tell you that everything went very, 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 very smooth from the beginning to the end of this development. But it wasn't. I was really thinking that I could do it in two to three hours. It turns out to become more five or six, maybe even seven. I don't even know. I did not really count. And here are basically all the issues and difficulties that I got. First, one more time, never ever create a prompt that imply a lot of tasks. Because very often, because it's kind of a junior developer, he will try things or maybe he will think that he can improve something else. No, just focus on what I asked. That's it. Second point, pay attention to lazy decisions to avoid bugs. bugs. Sometimes when we face bugs, we basically copy and paste the bugs that we have on the terminal and we drop it asking, just fix that stuff, please. Sometimes he will just go and say, okay, if in version two it doesn't work, I might take the Firebase function in version one, etc. And all of a sudden you, you break everything. You are breaking absolutely everything and it's a nightmare after to roll back. So be sure that he stay consistent in order, in order to keep the same framework, the same libraries and not refactor and reorganize things all over the place because after it is a nightmare and I had to roll back two to three times during that project. And actually that's another tip. When facing a big bug, don't hesitate to ask to redevelop the new version, even if it's on the side. For instance, he developed something on version one. I said, no, you know what? Version one doesn't work. Rebuild it in version two, use the updated libraries, up everything, make something clean so that I can build other features later on. And he did it. And like in one or two prompt, 
it was working right away. While I was, it, it was like something like 20 minutes that I was struggling with the first version. So don't hesitate to rebuild things. And on that note, it's even easier to reprompt again. Basically, if they, the, the AI generates some mistakes, it might be because your prompt was too vague or too broad. So it might be better and more beneficial to basically roll back everything that has been done during the past few prompts. And you say, okay, now I'm going to do only one tiny, tiny step in order to test and in order to move forward that everything that I ask works. And talking about good prompts, don't hesitate to remember him that we are building this application. You, I want just you to update the mobile application directory and can provide the directory if you know how to do it. And remember him to do not refactor anything, to do not change library, to do not restructure things because that's what he tend to be very often. And few la last tips, test it along the way. Don't move forward feature by feature without testing it. It's the best way to have something that you won't be able to manage uh, and later on. So always and often test what's working. And I would even say, even if sometimes you work on the mobile or on the admin, you need to go back uh, and forth between mobile application, back office, and if you have some backend functions as well, because sometimes you change the structure of the database and it can imply and break things on all the, the applications, basically. And last, when you are very, very stuck, and it happened to me when I was basically asking him to connect OpenAI. Nothing very techy, but I asked him basically, it was not working. So I, what I did is say, okay, I need to test. I need to test the API. I need to be sure that the uh, backend function that you are building works. Can you create a file on which I can use and test this API? And that's actually what he did. Basically, he created a directory test with sign in REST. And here, <clears throat> we've put basically all the information about the, the, the connection. So basically, it's mainly this one. The, the API token. And after, it allowed me to create some function. For instance, the sign in function. I can test here, sign in request, boom. I have here my sign in request with all the authentication. It's, a, it's an OK reply. It works. Then after, I generated another one. Generate a sales script. So basically, here I can send a request. I can click here. Of course, it takes a bit of time. I, I basically dumped the database. So basically here, the, the script ID that was here but is not working anymore. Okay, but basically if I take something that actually exists in my database and if I put it back in my test, which is what basically I did this afternoon. Now, if I send a request, basically it should work. So we can see that it is waiting. So if it is waiting, OpenAI is working and generating basically my sales script. Here we are. I have my sales script. Everything is fine. It's working. All that to say that with AI development or basically development done by AI, testing is actually key. And that led me really to my next challenge because I feel like we can do so much better, so much better than taking five hours to build an application. I think we could do it in one or two hours. I'm pretty happy with what I did because like a few months ago, it would take me one week or two. But I really feel like the next challenge of development done by AI is on automated test. And that's actually the topic of the next uh, one of the next video that I'm going to produce is how to actually create a function that tests along the way everything that is developed by the AI so that you can save a lot of time on development done by AI. So stay tuned, subscribe to the video if you haven't so far. And one more thing, if you have a startup project and if you want us to help you accelerate, I'm currently, currently training some amazing developers that I've been working with for years. And basically, I am teaching them how to co-develop with AI in the co and the co-founder or basically the project owner. So if you're interested and if you want to know more about uh, that new offer, you can just get on mycityofriend.co slash contact, send us a message. It's not released yet. And we have a special offer for the, the early birds that are going to contact us. Because as far as what I can have seen so far, yes, AI can develop amazing things and it can work for non-technical founders, but it is not still ready enough to be able to handle all the technical aspects of software development. And honestly, a pure non-technical founders might really struggle to build something and to never actually ship any program. While 
actually, he can save so much time working with someone that knows how to guide him. But I will tell you more in the upcoming videos as well. Um, until then, I hope you like that video and I plan uh, to do way more like this one in the upcoming weeks as well. So share your comments, your questions in the chat, uh, in the comment sections, and I'm happy to answer your question when I can. Uh, and uh, until then, I'm looking forward to hearing from you. Bye. See you.